The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games on the Switch. When it first came out, I played it endlessly and I'm very excited for the sequel coming out. Breath of the Wild is a massive game with so much to take in, and that means lots of dumb stuff to discover as well. I enjoy pointing out strange and baffling design choices in my favorite games, and Breath of the Wild has no shortage of weird things that don't make sense. So today we're going to be looking at 5 dumb things about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Let's begin. In true RPG fashion, you can buy a house in Breath of the Wild's Hiteno Village. There's a vacant house tucked away in the corner of town that's been abandoned for years, and when you first get to the village, a couple of construction workers are in the process of tearing it down. Or at least trying to tear it down. They seem to be hitting the same part of the wall with a hammer with no actual progress being made. Well, it turns out you can convince a pink pants wearing president of the operation named Bolson to instead let you keep the house in exchange for 50,000 rupees to cover the demolition costs, which is honestly absurd. You're telling me that having two guys smack at a wall for hours with a hammer, not doing any kind of damage is enough to cost 50,000 rupees? Which is an absurd amount of money in this world? And why are they even demolishing it? What reason could the villagers possibly have for tearing down a perfectly fine house in the middle of a post-apocalyptic wasteland? It seems like resources and shelter are scarce enough as it is, and the villagers just want to demolish the house? This entire situation makes absolutely no sense. If anything, Bolson will just lose a ton of money for the demolition costs. Of course, if you pursue buying the house, he talks it down to 3,000 rupees, but he is still essentially selling you a house that doesn't belong to him. And to make matters worse, it is heavily implied that the house belonged to Link 100 years ago before he lost his memories as a construction worker mentions that it belonged to a soldier who left and never came back. So this guy Bolson is essentially selling an amnesiac person his own house, and he even sells you the furniture which he probably took from the building before beginning the construction. In total, Link spends around 7,000 rupees to buy back his own house from someone who doesn't even own it. Do you see how much of a scam this is? And after you're done buying the house, Bolson and his buddy are still relaxing on your front yard, and they do not move from that spot all day. Imagine spending thousands of dollars to secure your own property and the guy you bought it from just freeloads on your lawn and won't move. And in case anyone wants to use the excuse that he just wants to relax under a big tree next to a fire, Bolson's own house has a tree just as big and a campfire literally right next to it. He can use that. He has no reason to cross the bridge every morning and trespass on private property like that. This whole situation is very dumb, but luckily you can cheese the game into getting rid of Bolson. When you finish a Terry Town quest where Bolson's buddy Hudson gets married, Bolson ends up going to another town to hang out at the wedding venue. As long as you don't talk to Bolson after the wedding, he will stay at Terry Town and you can be rid of him for good. In Breath of the Wild, almost every inch of the map it has a hidden Korok somewhere. These are little wooden grass fairy things. Usually you'll need to solve some puzzle randomly found in the world and they'll appear to give you a seed which lets you expand your inventory. And they really are found everywhere. Everywhere including Elden, the land inhabited by the volcano Death Mountain, which is totally not a ripoff of Mount Doom from the Lord of the Rings. Whenever Link wants to walk around the Elden area, he has to wear a Flamebreaker armor set which protects him from the heat. Without it, he practically bursts into flames in seconds. Bomb arrows instantly explode here and any wooden equipment will quickly catch fire just from being in the area. The entire place is like an instant death trap. Link cannot survive long here without the proper equipment. This is why it is so weird that the aforementioned Koroks can be found on Death Mountain. These creatures are literally made out of grass and twigs and somehow they are just running around Death Mountain, the hottest place in Hyrule, all willy nilly. This is dumb and makes no sense. These little weirdos should be lighting up like a book of matches out here. I mean, they are made out of the most flammable materials imaginable. They are practically begging to be set on fire, yet for some reason they seem to not mind the heat at all and can resist it much better than Link. Maybe they have some weird forest magic protecting them. But in the end, it really doesn't make sense that they're here. In Breath of the Wild's wintry Hebrew region, you can find a lone cottage on a mountain owned by Pondo. Pondo is a Hylian with a white puffy afro, he's basically the Bob Ross of the Zelda universe. His specialty is snowball bowling, where he throws a giant snowball down a hill to knock over giant wooden pins. A very productive use of one's time. This guy is incredibly weird because he doesn't ever go to sleep in his nice warm house, and he just stays outside patting a giant snowball all the time, so it's a wonder he hasn't gotten hypothermia by now. Pondo lets you play snowball bowling with him, 
but he charges you 20 rupees per attempt and he awards you with up to 300 rupees for a strike, which made this probably the best money making method when the game first came out. This is also very dumb if you think about it. This dude is practically giving money away because getting a strike is not hard at all. He also seems to have unlimited money like he's the richest man in the world or something. This brings up the question of, where did he get all this money? You have this rich guy in the middle of nowhere not doing anything with his life. He just keeps giving you money for knocking a couple pins over. Not that I'm complaining, but it is weird and has very strange implications about the in-game economy when people are willing to give away money for no reason. Pondo is one of the weirdest and dumbest characters in the game. The dude doesn't go to sleep, is constantly outside in the freezing cold, and he has millions of dollars to give away to people for no reason. Just who is this guy? In Breath of the Wild, you have one mission, destroy Ganon and save the kingdom. One of the coolest things about the game is you can go straight to the final boss as soon as the game starts. You don't have to spend dozens of hours exploring the world and building up your arsenal. Ballsy players can go right into the belly of the beast. What this also means is that pretty much every side quest you do in the game isn't all that rewarding. Breath of the Wild has a total of 76 side quests and honestly, not many of them feel all that rewarding. It's one of the game's biggest weaknesses if you ask me. The problem is that these quests require you to perform tasks for random NPCs that could include taking a picture, collecting something, or defeating some monsters among others. And the rewards for the quests are usually not that great honestly. You'll usually be given a little bit of money, but more often than not you'll be given some kind of food that you're just going to end up eating anyways. Sometimes rarely you'll get a cool weapon, but even weapons in this game are degradable so there's not a lot of quests that give you a permanent reward. Almost every reward you get will be gone at some point, so the incentive for doing quests just isn't there. I mean, one quest that has you fight a bunch of dudes literally has a carrot as a reward. Yeah, a carrot for risking your life fighting a bunch of bokoblins riding horses. Heck, if you happen to save random travelers from ambushes, they reward you with food also. You get a dish that you could have just cooked yourself in exchange for rescuing someone's life. This is the kind of reward players can expect in the game more often than not, which is barely useful and will be consumed and gone in a second. Part of making good side quests is making good rewards so the players will actually want to finish them, and Breath of the Wild's lack of good rewards just doesn't make me want to do a side quest so I wind up ignoring most of them. And it is a shame because there are a lot of interesting side stories that don't offer much in terms of incentive unfortunately. For my last dumb thing about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I wanted to talk about the Gerudo civilization. The Gerudo are these 8 feet tall Amazon women who have their own society in the desert that Link eventually has to infiltrate. And this entire society does not make even a bit of sense. It completely defies logic and something like this would never be able to sustain itself. The Gerudo race, first of all, is entirely made up of women in this game. There hasn't been a male among them for hundreds of years. Every Gerudo woman is basically guaranteed to give birth to a female. It's almost like tricolored cats that are 99% female. With this in mind, the Gerudo women in the game practically center their entire culture and upbringing on finding a Hylian man to settle down with. When you explore the town, you'll find women practicing talking to men with dummies, taking cooking classes to attract men, and drinking their sorrows away at the bar after getting rejected by men. And keep in mind that they put on this whole act that they hate men, as they don't allow any into the city. You even have to disguise yourself to get in. Despite this, their whole society is structured around the women going out of the city to find Hylian men, which pretty much results in them being exiled from the town because they can't bring back a man who they married, they would have to find somewhere else to live. This is beyond contradictory. It makes no sense for a society that basically centers itself around marrying men to not allow men. There's no way something like this would ever work. So how exactly does this town even operate? A race like this honestly would have died out a long time ago. They're so overly hostile towards men that they don't even allow men in their city. And they are so far away from the rest of civilization, so naturally, their birth rate would be incredibly low to the point where there wouldn't be any of them left. It's a society that cannot sustain itself. And all of the Gerudo women who live in the city? How do they even get there if most women who get married end up leaving the city and living somewhere else? This would basically imply that every Gerudo in the city was brought back by their mother and basically grew up without their Hylian father around. This is the absolute worst and most inefficient way for a race to continue keeping itself alive. It just doesn't make even a bit of sense. This has got to be one of the most baffling things about the entire game, hands down. So that was 5 dumb things about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I like this game a lot, I spent so much time playing it that some silly things about the game just stand out to me after a while. 
So if you want to hear me talk about more dumb things in Breath of the Wild and other games, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.